Well, a great way to start finals day here at the Onyx All England Championships. Wonderful women's singles in counter one by one. Shershian. Men's doubles coming up next, and then the women's doubles will follow that. Mixed doubles after that, and then the last of our five finals this afternoon. The dream final everybody wanted to see. Li Chong Wei of Malaysia up against Lin Dan of China. So to our next match on court and it's men's doubles it's the beaten finalists from last year Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen of Denmark up against the 2007 champions Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong it's the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships here at the NIA in Birmingham please welcome in the men's doubles final the number one seeds from Denmark Matthias Bo and Kasten Mogensen! Beaten finalists last year, beaten by their teammates, Lars Borska and Jonas Rasmussen. Well, there'll be no confusion this year for the Danish fans who they're supporting. It will, of course, be this pair because they are the world number ones. And they are up against Malaysian opposition. And their opponents, the number five seeds from Malaysia. fans here in Birmingham could celebrate in style as Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong lifted the All England crown. Will they be celebrating again this year? Richard Bramley of New Zealand, the service judge. And it is the umpire who tosses the coin. And it's the Malaysians, I think, who have won the toss. Well, the Danish combination will want to forget last year's final where they were beaten by their teammates because, of course, they held four match points but failed to convert. They have progressed in world status. They are the world number ones now. And as you can see, their win-loss record before this year, very impressive indeed. Winners of the Super Series finals in Taipei, beaten in the final of Korea. Well, their toughest match was in the first round against Hong Wei and Shen Ye from China. They were pushed the full distance there. But the outstanding thing to me is the fact that they haven't played against a seeded pair until today's final. Semi-final victory over Chai Biao and Guo Zhengdong. Very impressive indeed, having saved two game points in that opening game. Came back in the second to win it much more convincingly, 21-12. So the Malaysians, Kukian Kiang, 25 years of age. Tan Boon Hyong, the tall left-hander, two years his junior. Former world number ones, of course, but now down to number five in the world rankings. And their win-loss record for this year, not so impressive at all. Although 
they've been in two semi-finals the korean open and the german open last week this is their first final of the year well they've had a tough old battle through especially against the number four seeds the olympic champions in the quarter final marcus guido and hendra rasati one of indonesia they missed out on two match points in that second game which they dropped 23 25 but as you can see were very strong in the decider and then in the semi-final against the number six seeds the reigning world champions and the two-time all england champions kai yun and Fu Hai Fung, two straight games there. And in fact, in that second game, had to save a game point at 2021. It was a stunning match yesterday evening, that semi-final. Explosive, dynamic rallies. Well, as you can see, this is the ninth meeting between these two pairs. The previous eight, seven of them have gone in favour of the Malaysians. Well, the world number ones, the beaten finalists from last year, Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen, trying to become the third Danish winners of this men's doubles in the last six years. Traditionally, Denmark have always been very strong in this discipline. Well, for their opponents, the number five seeds, Ku Kiam Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong, as the Malaysian coaches make their way to courtside. Malaysians, when they won four years ago in 2007, beating the now world champions, Kai Yun and Fu Hai Fang, the pair they beat in the semi final last night. They were the first Malaysian winners since Razif and Jelani Sadek for 25 years. They, of course, the Sadek brothers won in 1982. Malcolm Bannum, our rumpar from England, and Richard Bramley, the service judge from New Zealand. And already there is a real atmosphere here. Huge number of Malaysian fans in the National Indoor Arena. Well, when their players were called into the arena, there was plenty of cheering, jumping up and down, waving banners, waving flags. I think we're going to be in for a real treat here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Yonix All England Open Championships Men's Doubles Final. Between, on my right, Hukin Kit, Tambu Yong, Malaysia. meeting between these two pairs the previous eight the Malaysians have won seven of them including the last five encounters so the fact that the Danes have only won one of the previous eight meetings is that going to play on their minds Ian? I think it possibly will yes it, and it's a it's a clash of styles that's the Danish problem here the Danes rely very much on Matthias Bow getting in and controlling the forecourt, but when they play Ku and Tan, Ku actually in most of those matches has been able to dominate that net position, and that makes it very difficult for the Danes pair to get the attacking opportunities. Well, both pairs, of course, consisting of a left and right hander. And a good call by the line judge, just wide by a whisker. Defensively, 
the Malaysians getting back shots that seemed almost impossible. Great interception from Kuo Kian Kiat. Uh, so Matthias Bo doesn't like the call. Yeah, here's a good example of what we were saying earlier on, Jill. It's Ku who's getting that position in the forecourt and gets the early interception in. Oh, my goodness, that was close. creating the opportunity but can't finish it a bit guilty of hitting onto the defense there when they had the opportunity maybe to go away from the racket of their opponent Once again, Matthias Bo can't believe the call. Hands on hips. Six, two. Mm. Well, I think he might have a point there. Kian Kiat has stayed, started this final in scintillating form. Very sharp. Yes, and as I said, he's getting in and he's dominating. He's driving Bo off the net there. And total control in the forecourt. start of this match but should have been ready because the Malaysians started their game in the semi-final incredibly quickly yesterday against Fu and Kai and they're doing the same thing today he's timed it Pushed it wide. Five, seven. Almost a year ago, the Malaysian pair were the number one seeds. They were expected to win this title. They lost in the very first round. Lost to the eventual champions. Interceptions from Carsten Morganson. They're very noticeable, both pairs trying to keep the shuttle flat, not wanting to give the lift away. And already had quite a few of these fast flat exchanges. Good flip serve. Very good angle. Didn't go for power. Went for the angle. He was thinking it was going to be a bit flatter. He goes into an aggressive position, racking up. Robinson manages to create the good angle to win the point. The run of five straight points comes to an end. 
Well, we've been talking all week, haven't we, Ian, about the frailties in the defensive play of Matthias Bolt and that weakness in his style of play really exposed in that last rally. Doubles tactics, isn't it? The big power hit from the left hander Tan Boon Hyong at the back of the court. Central attack, channel attack, as we call it, down the center of the court, narrows the angle of reply, and therefore there's a chance for the net player to get involved. Eight, nine. Judgment. Call from Kukian Kiats to his partner to leave it. And it was wise advice. Better tactics from the Danes there. Pushing past the net player, not letting Koo take the shuttle in the front court, pushing through to his partner. Keeping Koo out of the game there. Good reactions from Tan Boon Hyon. Good return of serve, and then he backed out to look for the straight push. With the play, quite brilliantly. So a two-point advantage to the former champions. Game interval. Thank you there. And the Malaysian coaches, and there's Robert C. Manaki, who of course won the all England title twice with Ricky Sabadja. Just take the pace off the shot. Klaus Paulsen, Danish coach there. Control their length from this quicker end at the moment. They want to push away from the net position. Unfortunately, they're just making some errors with length. Well, I think their most effective formation, as far as the Malaysians are concerned, is to actually have Tan at the back of the court using his power smash. Doesn't look just quite as comfortable around the net area as his partner. Gone wide, good rally. Yeah, great rally. Koo managed to get into the front of the court early in that rally, but the Danes stood up to it, and eventually it was the Danes who managed to get the attack and forced them defensive mistake.
rather. Matthias Bow does struggle to adjust from one side to the other there. He was played down his forehand side and then down his back, and then he tried to play the shot still with the forehand action. Getting in a tangle. couple of points the Danes just a little bit lost they've been pushing up the forehand side of Tan he's left-handed and he's taken full advantage he's very strong on the midcourt from that left-hand side and there's another example of it again the switch of attack on Bo very effective full-length dive from Kuki and Kiaks in the end to no avail. So they took the pace off, so Tan had to try and generate his own pace on that shuttle and just mistimed it. Good pace off from Mogensen to get the shuttle below net height. And that's what the Danish coach was telling him to do. That's clever. Very, very clever. And the Danes who have been in partnership for eight years, getting in all sorts of a muddle. Who should have gone for that? Oh, both too hesitant. It's a good return. Aggressive, good drive with the legs to take the shuttle early. That's good. Attack. I think the Danes have really got to use a little bit of block and mix that defence up a little bit. <laughs> well, Ian, you're absolutely correct about the intensity of the Malaysians, very similar to their semi-final yesterday against Kayun and Fu Haifan. Because they do have a tendency, occasionally, to be a little bit patchy within matches. But so far, very intense play, very good play. That's clever. Yeah, still look very focused. I think they'll have taken a lot of confidence from the quarter-final win, actually, because you know, with Kido and Seti, that's a pair they've had a lot of problems with in the past, and I think that's that's helped them a lot this week getting past that hurdle. Bang. There's a coach, this is great. Watch how he gets his racket up. Look at that. That's great. Push the midcourt, racket up, looking for the interception. Good doubles. So just two points away from this opening game. Now 
just the one. That's gone wide. First time of asking. 21-15. And the former champions looking very good indeed. Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon Hyong have absolutely pounced on anything short. They've controlled the game so far. And their reward is the opening game, 21-15. is advising his players and well, somehow you've got to break up the, the rhythm slow it down block it yeah, what's interesting here Jill is the the short rallies and that shows the control that the Malaysians have had on the serve and return situations at the end one or two mistakes on the service return from the Danes under pressure in that area well, the world number ones need to really take change their tactics here in this second game they got really drawn into the flat fast ex exchanges playing the rallies at 100 miles an hour it's got to try and slow it down second game yes, the games became world number ones on the 12th of november at the end of last year Broken strings. Yeah. Centre string. It's always a good sign if you break the centre string. Wasn't a miss hit. Turning the shuffle. Yeah, better defence, change of direction. Two, one. Away from Tan's forehand side, down that left hand side. That's clever play, that's better thinking. favouring the Malaysians. So yes, in the open game, ten short rallies won by the, by the Malaysians. That's after the serve return. Any rally less than five shots deemed to be a short rally. So far, 
Yeah, and good patient play from the Danes there. Didn't try to force the attack and give counter-attacking opportunities to the Malaysians. They kept the angle, stayed patient, and got the reward. Halt. Halt called by the umpire. Malcolm Bannon of England, the umpire, calling a fault on Matthias Bow. Yeah, good call. Very good call from the umpire. And just to explain that, you're not allowed to play the shuttle before it's come over the net. And of course, you're not allowed to touch the net either. To return there, finding space in the midcourt, getting the shuttle below net height, creating that attacking opportunity. He's pushed it long. Well, can't help but wonder whether the tremendous defence in the opening game by the Malaysians has just put a little bit of pressure on the Danes. Feel they've got to do something special to try and end the rally. Yeah, so he hasn't had many opportunities to get in an attack on the front court, and maybe he hasn't quite got his range there. Pastor Melvinson, apologises. Yeah, made his look by getting in early, though. That's a good brush return. Much, much more defending from the Malaysians here in this second game. It's something we saw in Korea from him, isn't it, Joe? Very, very quick, good first game, good concentration, and then just relaxing a little bit in this second game and happy to defend a little too much. 2.45, that's 152 miles per hour. Can't afford to push up that side to Tan. He loves that midcourt. His forehand side. Yeah, so many of the pushes from the net area going down towards Matthias Bow, the left hander. Really trying to pressurise him. Wise tactics. Yes, they're going well, don't they? Little switch, one down his backhand, one down his forehand, and he's still got that problem of quick grip change that's required in those fast track rallies. He's in silver medalists at the World Championships last year in Paris. They've been bronze medalists the year before. found the line it's a good return of serve it was it was a very good return of serve and we're in very good position pull them on the line Eight, five. Yeah, good call Giving the Danes 
some of their own medicine by throwing in the drop shot, slowing down the pace of the attack. That's beautiful. They certainly weren't expecting two drop shots in a row. from the Danes. The steeper the angle, if the Malaysians want to play the fast defence, it means it's going in an upward direction. It means the Danes are able to follow in and take advantage. Good tactical play from the Danes. Well, it was a good flick serve from Matthias Bo. Kiki and Kiat off guard. Well, calm and collected on the return of Sir from Tang because his opponent was looking for the push across court. from Tan on the midcourt, driving the Danes away from the net, and that puts his partner in good position. And you see pace on, gets his partner in on the net. Oh, that's clever, very clever play. It's great vision to see that Matthias Bow was pushing forward. He wanted to stay forward. Great peripheral vision. Yeah. Once again, a remarkable defence from Kukian Kiat. And the Malaysians a back level on a run of four straight points. Psychologically, this next rally is so important. Who's going to have the lead going to the mid-game interval? Pushed it long. It's the Malaysians who have the advantage on a run of five straight points and you have to wonder Ian what on earth has just turned this around on those last four five points well Malaysians have managed to get that net position back a couple of good returns a couple of good returns and Ku serving well and following it in and getting control of that net position and that's really the key to this match well the body language there of Matthias Bo will be of concern to all Danish fans. Almost appears to be arguing with Klaus Paulsen. Certainly not making eye contact, is he? Six straight points. Yeah, the Danes just can't afford with these pushes to have them above the net height. They've got to get the shuttle below net height if they're going to stay in this game. Oh, that's long for the back line. Yeah, it's better rally. They managed to get the push, step up, and take the pace off, get the shuttle below the net. There, that's a good block. That creates the opportunity to take the attack. Malaysians force it out the rear court. It's 
so fast. Malaysia Bolle means come on, go Malaysia in Bahasa. And again, short rallies really favouring the Malaysians, dominating the serving return situations. There's another one. Good speed, good vision. New matches, Bo wanted to play the block to try and take the net position, but Ku was there. Well, he missed it, but it's dangerous for the Danes. Again, he had the opportunity to take the shuttle above the net from the mid-court position. Yes, and it's interesting that he was aiming once again at Matthias Bo on his attacking play. Decisive move from Matthias Boat. He yeah, read it well, but it's the nice angle. And pace off from Carsten there, the block. And the good angle, not trying to hit it too hard. That gives us part of the time to get into position. Just wide. Concentrate on trying to get the shuttle below net height, and when they do, they're having some success with that now. Yeah, shuttle badly deflected by the net court. Took the pace off the smash, but it still landed in. That was a real miss it from Bo here. We're fortunate with that. Dane's back level. That short. Yeah, got what it deserved. The smash had it all. Pace, direction, angle. No defence to that. Two seventy-one. Goodness me, that's the second fastest of the tournament. That's a service fault, first of the game. I think being down here just smash the other day at two seventy-two. each other to get the net player involved. The Danish player looking a totally different prospect. And then Rosie wanting to put pace on, but when the shuttle's from below the net height, it means that the shuttle's going to go up, and that puts the Danish net player in with a chance. It's having the line. Well, the Danes complain about the call. We've got perfect sight of that line. From where we're sitting, and I thought that was plumb on the line. Yeah, I thought that hit the line. What do you reckon, Ian? Yeah, I think that's him. Oof. Outside of the line, but. Yes, of course, if the cool. shuttle as it lands, and it will always land cork first, if it touches any part of the line, then it's in. Opportunity there from Matthias Bo, and that could prove absolutely crucial. 
To each other involving the net player so vital. Well, Christy Mogensen's had a good second game, he's managed to create a lot of, lots of opportunities, but Matthias has looked a little nervy around the net, he's missed quite a few chances. 18 or Drifted long. The Danes just two points away from claiming this second game and sending it to a third and decider. Just one point required to claim this second game. And Bo doing what he does best, going forward to the net. It's two game points. And he needed the one. Bo finishing it off at the net once again. The Danish fans celebrate because it is now one game all in the men's doubles final here at the 2011 All England Championships. Yes, well, they had to battle hard but when they kept the shuttle going down, mixed up the pace. They enjoyed success. Confirmation, it is one game all. The Danes having taken the second, Yeah, the stats there are quite interesting. The short point still still favouring the Malaysians. But when the Danes are getting into the rallies, they're getting opportunities and more winners from the rear court from them in that second game. Still no flick serves from the Malaysians. While the Malaysian coaches are very busy with their players in that interval. And interesting, Ian, different coaches talking to different players. They're still talking independently. Yes, after the first game in the first game interval, Rexy was concentrating on Ku, talking about front court and what he was looking for him, and it was tanking her talking to Tan. And then it was a complete switch around there. It was Rexy went to uh, Tan and tanking her went to talk to Ku. A little strange. Serve five times in that second game. 
Yes, they've used it to good effect against uh, Ku just to take him off that favoured net position. Just trying to flick him off that net, keep him away, make it more complicated for the Malaysians to get into their favoured formation. Well, the Malaysians certainly didn't use the flick serve themselves throughout that second game. I don't think they did in the first either. No reason to, I don't think. They've been dominating the serve and return situations, and they both serve very well with their short serves, and they're sticking to it. Maybe a little bit of frustration that they hadn't already won the rally, trying to bring it down too steeply in the end, making the error. I wasn't Just expecting that one back. Uh, lost patience with that. Just as I'm praising the short serves, there's an error. think he's right to try and get involved in the front of the court I think when he's pushed back there's a real weakness I think that he's so superb at the front that he's got to take the half chances yeah he's got to go for it I thought the movement was good the idea was good but I think there was a lot of space for the block just to take the attack and in the second game his partners created a lot of opportunities for him from the rear court so Matis should maybe be looking for a little bit more block when he's got those chances Service halt called, struck above the waist. A little shake of the head from Matthias Boat. Well, I thought he used a flick serve earlier on in this final that looked desperately high. Oof, yeah, that's a good call by the service judge. Struck above the waist. Guilty of forcing the play here. They've done the hard part. They've got the shuttle below the net height. Oh, that's nice. Just tapping the shuttle in a downward direction. Oh, much better pace off. Much the better option. Complete mishit, snatching at it. Yeah, critical errors, that's three already in this game from the midcourt. Just got to be patient when they took the pace off from that position in the rally before, they won the point. And now he's just snatched and tried to hit too hard. His partners could play. Yes, but again, it's on to the body of Bo. That's the target. It's going wide. Again, he's trying to hit hard from that midcourt when there's space for the block. Look, lots of space here. a sign of nerves isn't it you lose your spatial awareness you start hoping the shuttle is going out rather than knowing it's going out five 
point advantage now for the Malaysians. Disappointed in that because there was a huge gap. All he had to do was steer the shuttle into the open space. to lift cross court and leave his partner exposed there to be honest good pressure Turn and gets back into position quickly. Good racket work. Slightly stiff with the racket arm. Nerves showing once again. That's why he made the error. And it's the Malaysians who have the advantage as the players change ends. The five-point advantage. Let's see which way the coaches are going to go here. Yeah, taking who has gone back to turn. Lexi talking to Koo. Yeah, he's talking very much about using the block to get in behind it, to get him into that position, that favoured net position. Hold it up. You don't have to force it. He's right. There is space in the in the front of the court when they're intercepting the shuttle on the mid court. There's quite a lot of space, but they're putting pace on all the time. It's not the best tactic in this match. In fairness, though, Ian, I mean, when you're playing a major final like this, it, it's really quite common to get embroiled into the sort of atmosphere, and, and it's very difficult to sometimes think clearly about the instructions your coach has given you. Of course, you try. But you almost get forced into playing the fast, fast rallies, fast exchanges. Yeah, so that's much better from Carsten. That's that mid-court position. Didn't try and force it. Took the pace off to the centre. Malaysians lifted out the back. There, pace off. Easy point. I agree with you, Jill. What I would say is that the great players managed to do it. Yeah, of course. That clever play by the Malaysians. Finding the weakness once again. Steps off the interception, doesn't try and hit it too hard, just clips it down under the defence. Good play. That's clever.
as they smashed on Matthias Bow towards his left shoulder. He made the error. Yeah, interesting rally though. I've just got a feeling that Tan's just feeling a little tired here. He lost the angle of his smashes altogether here, there. Four or five smashes, but didn't really get them going down with a good angle. But as you say, Lynch has switched that attack across the bow defence. It's still a real weakness there. Well, it'd be understandable if the players are feeling the pace of this. Match in progress, 52 minutes. Certainly calling it in. No, he did find the line. Good call, line judge. Considering both the Malaysians were completely out of position, he didn't leave himself much margin. <laughs> no. There's nobody there within three metres. between the two Malaysians, the channel attack. Dissecting the Malaysian defence. trying not to lift the shuttle but just pushing out the side. The right idea, wrong execution. Once again, the Malaysians extend the lead to four points. To win this type of match if you're making mistakes from above net height. Oh, there's another two. Oh. Yeah, good return of serve. clever that's better I'm not trying to force the play looking for space rather than pace yeah lovely lovely hold a new coup would be trying to push in to take the net position held it flipped over the head oh good judgment and he just managed to get out of the way and again the block the block forces the Malaysians to lift and it's difficult to control from this end just two points the deficit <laughs> now just the one Both pairs showing signs of nerves now as the finishing post comes into sight. 
That's his favourite shot, mid-court forehand at that left-hand side. Dragged it down into the net. Well, that was such an important rally. It really was to level the score. Five straight points, and the Danes are back level. Malaysians all out of position, but still trying to hit hard. Not giving their partner time to get into a good position. And the Danes, in fact, now into the lead on a run of six straight points. surprised of the tournament referee had a word with the Danish coaching staff cannot be seen to try to influence any of the court officials oh that was in that was a good call by the line judge that was well in so I don't see what the problem is there good umpiring refused to beat intimidated into changing the call but the Danes reacting well yeah good point got the shuttle down early in the rally and it's the Malaysians again just hitting hard from below net height so the shuttle's always going up of the last nine rallies and they're now just two points away from the title that eluded them last year in the final exactly one hour this match has been in progress and it's all about who can hold their nerve Turn of serve from Kuki and Piat. Yeah, that's a good return from Kuku. He needs to be strong now because it's Tan that's making errors. And we said it in that rally where he had to hit five or six smashes. I think Tan's a little tired here. He's making some poor decisions. Carsten Mogensen towards his coaches. Because now the Danes, having come from behind in this deciding game, have two opportunities to take the title.
thrilling final, Matthias Bo and Karsten Morgensen. The agony of missing out on four match points 12 months ago. A year on, they duly take the title and they've taken it having come from behind at 11.16 down in the deciding game. They had to come from a game down in the first place because they dropped the opening game 15-21, took the second 21-18 and 21-18 in the third game as well. The realisation that at long last the title is theirs. Denmark once again have men's doubles champions here at the All England Championships. Five years ago, it was Jens Eriksson and Martin Hungo who took the men's doubles. Last year, it was Lars Borska and Jonas Rasmussen beating Bo and Mogensen in the final. This year, they held their nerve, overcoming the former champions in three thrilling games. Well, a big gasp of air there from Karsten Mogensen. The delights of achieving your dream of winning the All England title. Danish coaches leaping to their feet. I can tell you that our colleagues from Danish television just along from us doing exactly the same thing, leaping in the air. The celebrations from the Danish fans will go well into the night here in Birmingham. Well, what a final it was. A wonderful men's doubles and confirmation of the score once again. 15-21, 21-18, 21-18 the deciding game. and championships men's doubles to make the presentations please welcome Derek Batchelor chairman of badminton England Paul Jensen managing director of Yonex UK and Paisan Rangsikipo BWF deputy president this marks the 101st championship and the 28th consecutive year of Yonex sponsorship making it one of the longest partnerships in sporting history Badminton England would like to extend its sincere thanks and appreciation to Yonex for its continued support. We're also privileged to be part of the OSIN BWF World Super Series as a premier event. To thank our officials, Derek Batchelor from Badminton England will now award commemorative medals to umpire Malcolm Bannum from England and his service judge Richard Bramley from New Zealand. gentlemen, our runners-up in the men's doubles, Ku Ken Kiat and Tan Boon Hyun from Malaysia. The number five seeds from Malaysia, Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Boon Hyun, who looked to be in the driving seat Paul in Jackson that deciding game UK when they were 16 the in up, but just couldn't convert that advantage. Of course, they were the champions here back in 2007. This year, and they have to settle for Bamington second England best. And now present the runners-up medals.
Ladies and gentlemen, our runners up in the men's doubles, Hu Pian Piat and Tan Boon Please now welcome our winners onto the podium, the 2011 Yonex All England Open Men's Doubles Champions, Matthias Bo and Carsten Morganson from Denmark. Matthias Bo and Carsten Morganson. Disappointment for them 12 months ago. This year, they are the champions. Derek Hatchelow from Farmington, England, will present the winner's medals. They also receive an OSIN U Divine, the world's first human 3D massage chair, and a bottle of Pomery champagne. Now Matthias Bo and Carsten Mogensen will receive the trophy from Paisan Rancid Kimpo, the BWF Deputy President. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2011 Yonex All England Men's Doubles Champions from Denmark, Matthias Bo and Carsten Mogensen! Ladies and gentlemen, please celebrate with our winners and runners-up on their lap of honour.